Hello, and welcome to a live recording of Guide to the Unknown. I'm Will. Hey, and I'm his big sister, Kristen. Oh, baby. Oh, baby, baby. We have returned. What's yeah. going on, everybody, in the live chat over yeah. here? I see a bunch of people. Kat, Caitlin, Joanna, Brittany, Caitlin again, <laughs> Sarah, Andrea. Doing some dishes. <laughs> oh, Love my being gosh. the soundtrack to chores, gen- genuinely. Oh, that's, that's wonderful. Great. Hello. The Kesters are watching. Oh. Hi, guys. Hello. Hi. Good to see you. Bobby's on his way back to the East Coast. Oh, nice. Yeah. Excellent. Um, cool, everybody. Hey, Drew, Sarah, cool. Uh, nice to see you all. Yeah. Um, I want to share something in here um, real quick. Yeah, I have it I have it pulled up on my phone. So somebody posted this into the, um, the Guide to the Unknown group. Mm-hmm. Joseph posted this into uh, the Guide to the Unknown Secret Society. You can find it on Facebook. It is a video um, captioned, they got a call about a noise in the graveyard. Did you see this? Uh, I saw it, but I didn't watch it. Okay. So uh, it is two police officers. I'll I'll narrate it. Uh Um, Uh-huh. It is two police officers in the dark with flashlights. They hear that scream and it sends them running. And I... Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Okay. Ugh. But you can see it's there's something so alarming about seeing the cops just out on like a routine call, hearing that scream, that? and then That's... like falling over themselves, running away. Is there any extra story to it? I can embellish. D- well, I don't need you to. But is there any other context at all? Uh, I don't, I don't think so. No, it seems like it's just, you know, one of those things that made the rounds. I don't even know if this person who it's a, it's a post in the group of another person's post and it got shared 1.1 million times. I mean, that's scary. It's so loud. That scream. And all the comments are like to protect and serve and then crying, laughing emojis and stuff. Uh huh. I find it to be absolutely terrifying no it's really scary and although cat just pointed out i bet it's like a fox or something i think that that is exactly <laughs> yeah. what that is uh, I totally think caitlin it's said that's a blair witch scream funny that you should bring up blair witch because uh i wrote about in the w- there are these like podcasts that you get if you sign up for the blair the hunter killer blair witch thing if you sign up for that you'll get in between each shipment you're gonna get little mini podcasts mm-hmm. i scripted them all and a lot of them are based on things that we've talked about here yeah and uh so i wrote one about how animals sometimes have calls that sound like humans screaming Mm -hmm. and that that is the cause for a lot of ghost stories and stuff and so i ended up having to source the sound of like a barn owl screech and a red fox and that's what that sounds like to me right there i've heard that live unfortunately oh really yeah when i lived in the apartment right by the woods on no man's land yep it was horrible (laughs) Well, you also might have heard like people being killed. I know, hard to say. It was it it went on for so long too because I remember I went to bed, I had heard like a fox screaming or doing it or something. Yeah. And then Crumbs had a seizure like in the middle of the night, so I had to uh, walk him in the middle of the night and yeah. it was still going. Uh, horrifying. <laughs> horrifying. I couldn't believe it. Well, Bobby says rabbit death scream 100%. That is Ugh. that is a thing. Rabbits will scream. I didn't know that. As they're being killed. Ugh. So, it, it's 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 an animal, you know. But the uh, fact of the matter is that's where ghost stories come from in mm-hmm. some part. But like seeing seeing two cops that are just like, "Yeah, I've got my flashlight. I got to go walk in the dark to this graveyard." And yeah. Then they hear that and you can see them. Do a 180 and, like, fall down yeah. mid-run to get away. Well, no matter what it is, it, it pierced the silence. Oh, Very yeah. Very surprising. Absolutely. <laughs> and also, the second I saw it, I was like, I would like to make this. Uh-huh. I would like to make this video. Yeah. <laughs> I would just like to shoot this video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, Blackwood vibes. Yeah. Um, All yeah. right. After we talked about Blackwood last week, a lot of people listened to it. After we talked about Blackwood last week, it got like a bunch of new reviews and stuff too. Awesome. So I don't know if we uh, hope you enjoyed it. Count really as influencers here, but uh, I just want to say I, I did see a lot of people saying very kind things about Blackwood, which mm-hmm. is an audio drama that I wrote, and uh, thank you all very much for saying it. Yeah. Um, I, I've certainly got Blackwood on the brain right now. Cool. Um, all right. Uh, real quick. Shell Bell asks, are we planning to do any more creepypasta stories? Yeah, uh, episodes? I'm sure I, w- I would love that. Mm-hmm. I-, I loved doing that episode a couple weeks back. Right. I did too. Oops. Um, 
Cool. All right. All right, everybody. Let's do it. Yeah, I think it's show time. Okay. Uh, here we go. Here we here go. We go. Whoa. You want to go first? Sure. Welcome to Guides the Unknown. I'm Kristen. And I'm her little brother, William. And this week, we are talking about real-life treasure hunts. They are a thing. They are an actual thing. Yes. Um, I, not that I was shocked to hear about this, because you think about it, you especially hear it as a kid growing up, or you see it in movies and stuff. Mm -hmm. X marks the spot. Right. If you can just follow this treasure map, it'll lead you to a big red X on the ground. Mm -hmm. Dig down deep enough, and you are going to find a treasure chest. Pirates would make treasure maps. Yes. Right, Kristen? They would. Wrong. <laughs> well, only, really? Only kind of wrong. Okay. I did, I did some genuine research into treasure maps themselves mm -hmm. um, that I'm kind of interested to get into. And then uh, a legit real life uh, uh, treasure hunt. Cool. That's happening right mm -hmm. now. And yes, What's it I, called? It's, it's like the golden oyster or something? Yeah. The, is that what it is? The golden oyster. This nice. came up in our planning session for the yes. month. So I looked into the case of the golden. Drew gold. suggested it. So thank you, Drew. Thank you, Drew. We'll I looked do a into planning the... session on Patreon where people can throw out ideas and Drew threw this one out. Yeah. So I looked into the case of the golden oyster and I'll have a bit to say about that. I mean, quite frankly, everybody get ready to pony up because you need to buy the <laughs> treasure map, basically. But uh. you can literally do it right now from home. Huh. Um, I've already, I just I just purchased purchased it myself. So oh, nice! It didn't arrive in time for the show, but maybe, maybe we'll do a follow up. Is also something that people could participate in at home. Is that right? Yes, it's called the Secret. It's not the self help book, The Secret about the Law of Attraction. It's a book from the '80s that um, was a map to 12 treasures buried in parks all around the country. And you can still buy that book, and you can still try to find the treasures. It's so Only crazy. three have been found. Okay, I may, have, I may have seen a little bit of that in my research mm -hmm. then. Um, so, yeah, I, I also want to talk about one other thing that you can all certainly participate in, particularly if you're around uh, New Jersey. Yes, yes. Uh, this, uh, in the next few weeks, there's going to be a, a horror con mm -hmm. in Atlantic City, New Jersey, the NJ Horror Con. Yep. If it rings a bell, Kristen and I actually had gone to, uh, to visit it a couple of years ago, and we right. did some reporting back. We took some pictures while we were there. Yep. Well, this time we bought a table. Mm-hmm. So on Saturday, September 4th, if you come to the NJ Horror Con, you can come see us. Yeah. Um, and please do, because I don't think anybody else knows we're going. Definitely not. Nobody's excited about it. No, we um, forgot to tell people. <laughs> no, I, I didn't think we should tell anybody until it was closer. Anyway. Oh, then this is all according to plan. Yeah. You know, you don't want to do it too far out because then people forget it's a thing. Right, You true. do it close to the thing. But, um, but yeah, we're going to be there. We'll have a big Guides and Unknown banner on our table. We're going to – I'm not sure what we're going to do. We might kind of, like, record an episode as we're there. I think the only option is to people watch. Yeah. And record a show about the experience of doing a con right. at all. Right. I was thinking also, and I'm saying this to you for the first time right now, just spitballing, that we could bring the games that we have done on Patreon oh. and play those with each other that's and maybe fun. quiz people walking up. Like That's not bad. You know, that's a little something. Sure, that's fun. We'll figure it out. But anyway, we will be there no matter what it is that we're actually doing at our table. Yeah. And if you're listening to this in real time, you can come meet us there in about two weeks. Yeah, that's right. September 4th. Saturday, September 4th of the year 2021. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to try to get my hands on uh, maybe a few uh, stickers, some light merch. Mm -hmm. Light merch. Yeah, gentle merch. Gen <laughs> gentleman's merch. <laughs> uh, but yeah, and also, Kristen just referenced it, but we did play more uh, horror trivia games mm -hmm. over on patreon.com slash gttupod. Yep. The stakes couldn't have been higher. No, they couldn't have been. We each picked a topic for a main show. Yeah. If I won the trivia games... Kristen would be forced to deal with my topic on the last episode of August and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Were Kristen to win, I would have to cover 
her topic of choice. Spoiler alert, we each pick things we know that the other doesn't want to do. Right. So the topic that I want to cover is going to make Kristen miserable, and you would get to hear her be miserable. And the same is true the other way. Vice versa. I'll be miserable at the end of the month if Kristen has won the game. But you can find out who won right now. Patreon.com slash pod if you listen to the episode. Mm-hmm. Um, the winner has been decided, and the plans are already being made. How are we going to handle the final show of the month? Yes. One of us will be happy. The other... Not so much. Quite sad. Quite, quite sad, really. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, so let's talk about treasure maps. So like I said, I did some research into actual real-life treasure maps. Mm-hmm. Because again, I think it's, it's such a thing that you're, you're used to the concept of, right. at least. So come to find out, and this is all from Wikipedia, they're primarily uh, used in fiction which is to say they're not used in nonfiction. Me. Yeah. Which is to say... They're not real. They're not real. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, no, me, me either. Yeah. But uh, there certainly are cases of, of people in real life actually going, like, go to these coordinates to find the thing I buried. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, say, some people have buried treasure knowing I'll be back tomorrow. Right. Stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, this like is geocaching. The, yeah, this is all kind of like geocaching. Yeah. Geocaching is really a modern day, right? Sort of, uh, but those are like micro treasures because it'll but be it's like still hunting down an item. Yes, but I, but when I'm talking about treasure, mm-hmm. and I'll talk about this a little bit when it comes to the golden oyster as well. There's a, there could be a monetary windfall mm. that that comes your way if you can solve the you know follow the rules to get to the hidden treasure at the end yeah with geocaching my understanding is yes you might go on the adventure yeah to find the location but once you get to the location it's usually you sign a book or you find a little thing or you have a little thing to look at it's it's the, very much the fun of it it's the journey not the destination right these kinds of treasure hunts it's about the destination mm-hmm. you want the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow so here is one of the earliest known instances of a document listing buried treasure it is the copper scroll which was recovered among the dead sea scrolls um, in 1952 now this copper scroll Kristen, is believed to have been written in 50 or 100 a.d okay a.d is what we're in right now we're right. living in the year 2021 a.d so they're saying this was written in the year in 50. 50 yeah <laughs> back when it was only double digits right the amount of years um, the scroll contains a list of 63 locations with detailed directions pointing to hidden treasures of gold and silver. The following is an English translation of the opening lines of the Copper Scroll. In the ruin which is in the valley of Acor, under the steps leading to the east, 40 long cubits, a chest of silver and its vessels, with a weight of 17 talents. Thus far, no item mentioned in the scroll has been found. Okay. I barely understand what the scroll is saying. Uh, it says, go this way and you'll find something. That's a weight of 17 talents. So I guess that's a, a weight of measure from the 50s. Well, who's the most... Original ta- 50s. The original 50s. Yeah. Yeah, was, this scroll was found in the 1950s, but it's from the 50s. Uh-huh. It's from 1900 the years earlier. 50s. Yeah. Um, and then uh, as it uh, pertains to, to pirate treasure... Because that's really the big one. You think of a pirate going like, Yarr, X marks this spot for Pirates me pot booty. of gold. Um, uh, although buried pirate treasure is a favorite literary theme, there are very few documented cases of pirates actually burying treasure and no documented cases of a historical pirate treasure map. Hmm. One case of buried treasure um, comes from uh, Sir Francis Drake, who buried Spanish gold and silver after raiding a train after drake went to find his ships he returned six hours later and retrieved the loot and sailed for england so he buried his treasure for a whopping six hours right almost doesn't seem worth mentioning it's just a long afternoon yeah that's not really like i mean i know it was fancy stuff but dinner and a movie yeah um another case in 1720 involved british captain stratton of the prince eugene who, after supposedly trading rum with pirates in the Caribbean, spoiler alert, that's the entire reason I'm reading this to you. (laughs) Because it mentions pirates of the Caribbean, uh, kind of. He traded rum with pirates in the Caribbean. (laughs) Yeah. I wonder which one. 
I would love to know. Rum? Yeah. The guy loves it. Where's the rum, Savvy? Do your, do your best. Where's the rum, Savvy? Okay, you that just said what I, it wasn't bad, but you just said what I said. I don't know. What else did he say? Uh, Yo, ho, ho. Yo, ho, ho. He just sounded like a bro. Yeah, huh, huh. He sounded like a bro, like, hitting on someone. Well, yo, huh, huh. <laughs> what have we here? Have, like, a yacht week, you know, in Santorini. God. Well, yo, ho, ho. <laughs> um, so he... Ba- Sorry. He, ba- he, ba- <laughs> he buried his gold near the mouth of the Chesapeake Bay. One of his crew, Morgan Miles, turned him into the authorities, and it's assumed the loot was recovered. But they don't know. They also say that Captain Kidd buried treasure near Long Island, New York. Ah, was that ever recovered? Or should we get our uh, metal detectors and head out there? Uh, there was... Unclear. It's unclear. <laughs> <laughs> I, should really, I should really warn you, even in the actual thing I'm going to tell you about that's going on right now, it's yeah. unclear if many of these things have been successful. I mean... Yeah. That's fascinating, though. Yeah. But so where does the treasure map come from, then? Mm -hmm. Why, if pirates didn't use them, why the hell do we know about it? Yeah. Why is it in my head? I don't know. Somebody made it up? Kristen, pirate treasure maps live in my head (laughs) rent-free. Oh, my God. Not sick of that phrase. All right. Um, Treasure maps have taken on numerous permutations in literature and film, such as the stereotypical tattered chart with an X marking the spot, Mm -hmm. first made popular in Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island. That would do it. There it is. It stems directly from fiction. Yeah. Directly from fiction. Yeah, but not the, surprised. The thing is, it's so exciting mm-hmm. a concept. The 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 sort of like adventure of it to say, um, yeah, there, there's there's Buried. untold gold right. waiting for you if you can just take this journey or or solve this series of riddles or something like that. Do you remember seeing like segments on Unsolved Mysteries about guys who heard that there are like gold bars buried somewhere in Texas or something, and they dedicate like so much time and money to this endeavor of finding them? I feel like I've seen segments where sometimes it seems like they're enjoying themselves, yeah, and somewhere I'm like, I feel like this guy just his life's work is not going to amount to really what he's looking for, and it doesn't seem like he's having fun. You're saying he's wasting his life, kind. <laughs> His whole life, <laughs> literally the one thing I you feel have. Like I've seen ah, one I of them where I'm it. like, oh my God, <laughs> this guy doesn't seem like he's getting any closer. He's spending all his time and money. He doesn't seem like he's having fun doing it. I don't know about this. To get to the end and just be like, oh man, I blew it. I didn't get it. <laughs> that sucks. I know. Well, that's a bummer. I know. Have you ever used like a metal detector or anything? No, but we did get Al's I know. father a metal detector to use on the beach. Yes, yeah. I know. I, has... think, I think I think he has. I saw a guy with a metal detector in the park uh, oh. a while back, so people certainly go out there and use them. That's cool. The, the fact of the matter is this. One, you asked me about those Unsolved Mysteries segments. They were always the ones that I zoned out on. Yeah, always not the it, most exciting. They ones. lost my attention the second they started talking. Yeah. So quite frankly, maybe people out there right now are 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 bored of us talking about it. But like, I just it always seemed fruitless or pointless or like. That's what I'm saying. All right, like even if you found something, like well, it's not what I came to unsolve mysteries for. Yeah. I came to unsolve mysteries for spooky, weird, scary stuff. Yeah. To be frank. Yes. Not, not treasure and pots of gold. Yes. Um. But having said all of that. I do think that this is an interesting topic, and I, and quite frankly, there are cases of people usually not following a treasure map to find something, mm-hmm. but there are certainly cases of people being like, I dug in my backyard, and I found something. Yeah. There's a person in town right now who I, I recently met who is doing like a, or was doing a summer camp mm-hmm. thing because they were trying to install something in their backyard, so they had to dig, and they uncovered architecture. They just started to uncover, so they're doing an archaeological dig in their backyard and bringing kids around to look at it and help in the dig. And, and What do you mean architecture? Some sort of, yeah, uh, some sort of a structure of, of something. Uh, in their, in the under. <laughs> in the <laughs> under? Not under in the, the under. Under the ground in their backyard? Yeah. A structure? Yeah, I don't like think. Like there's a house <laughs> in the ground <laughs> under their backyard? You better hope that no one's home. I know. <laughs> what do you mean? They they found some. I, uh, the spoiler alert. I don't know what it is, but they found something that was of uh, uh, archaeological interest. You didn't mean to say architecture. You meant to say, like archaeological something. I thought that it was a structure. 
Okay. I'll say that. So I, I could be wrong. But the fact of the matter is, I spoke I feel to. Phil, like you must be wrong. You must be wrong. You must. Architecture in their backyard <laughs> under the ground? Architecture doesn't have to be a huge cathedral. I know, but it still isn't architecture always like a building or a home or something? Or part of a structure. Like, I'm not. Even I'm not. so, that is wild to find in your backyard. Yes. Oh, yeah. And how exciting. But my thing is, like, a treasure map didn't bring them to it. But my point being, these this happens. There are things to be found, and, and usually you stumble across them. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell? I know. It's cool, though. So let's talk about it when people when people try to make this happen. Mm-hmm. So the golden oyster, as suggested by Drew, what it is, is a constructed treasure hunt. Yes. Um, it is put together by a person named Joe Bartley. <laughs> What? I'm just going to chime in and say Joe Oyster. Joe <laughs> Oyster. Fill it in for you. <laughs> the Golden Oyster is just their nickname. Mm-hmm. There is no gold right. to be found. <laughs> no, this was a, a treasure hunt that was posted online in April of 2020. Mm-hmm. So just over a year ago as of this recording. And as of this recording, nobody has completed it. Oh, wow. So here's the what of it. It's not just you know constructing a treasure map and putting it online. We're living in a, a new era. So this is a book. Mm-hmm. It is a 22-page book, not a treasure map. Each page of the book is a clue to figure out the location of this treasure. Cool. Next wrinkle is that you don't have to go physically to the location. Sir Francis Drake uh-huh. needed to know where he had buried his stuff to get it back six hours later. Right. What I can do is I can purchase this book and then I can solve the mystery while sitting on the toilet. Oh, perfect. Yeah. It is That's my favorite kind of treasure hunt. I know, isn't it? Yeah. Now it's it's all I find it every time. <laughs> <laughs> ah, my my precious. Mm-hmm. Um now uh the point is you can you can do this from your armchair. Your armchair toilet. Yeah. Um, You don't have to physically travel to the location. What you do have to do is go through the 22-page book of clues. Mm -hmm. At the end of it, it should tell you a place. You email your solution to the person who put it together, Joe Bartley. And you can't just say, it's on 22nd Street. Mm -hmm. You have to say, it's on 22nd Street, and here's how I figured it out. You have to show your work. But then this person's able to verify whether or not you worked out the solution, and you will win, one, a gold-plated antique oyster pendant. Mm -hmm. So it's a literal piece of treasure. Yeah. Two, you will, and this was a shocker to me, you will win however much money was raised from selling the treasure maps to begin with. Wow. The more people who play... The more money to be won. Uh huh. Because each purchase adds to the communal pot. It adds to the treasure. That's pretty cool. Very so clever. Does this guy not? Did he not give himself any proceeds from the book? This is all just feeding itself. I believe it's a woman. Okay. Um, I'm not sure. I'll yeah. stick with yeah. Person. I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I I I have to think so. Uh huh. Because uh, I, they, they certainly seem to be a hobbyist. Mm-hmm. Um, I am fully aware that they are also investigating other treasure hunts themselves. I think that they, honestly, it seemed to me, for one thing, when I started looking into this, I was like, am I researching like a hunt-a-killer competitor? Yeah, right. For an, but then the second I started looking deeper, I was like, I, no, there's not a business model here. Mm-hmm. There are, it's a, it's a passion-based community yeah and it does not appear to me to be enormous mm-hmm. um uh a, a lot of these um treasure hunts there there are forums that you can go on where people will cross-reference their hunts with each other but they're they're effectively competitors right um uh but they're not that populated i have hmm. to say that there's not a ton of conversation huh. happening in some of these forums is there an estimate of how much the pot is? Have they put that out there? They said they put that out there, and then I could not find the huh. info. Okay. So I don't know. What mm-hmm. I do know is I did buy the book. I did buy the treasure map. Mm-hmm. And so I have added to the, the pot. The pot. How and much was the book? Uh, it cost me 17 bucks. Okay. 
but uh, they're in the average. UK and I am I'm over here in New Jersey. Right. So it, uh, that could have added to the cost. I, I don't know. Yeah. The fact of the matter is it's it's unclear how the math works out here. I also mm-hmm. saw a statistic saying like they think that each purchase probably adds like five bucks to the pot. Uh-huh. So or five, you know, five pounds. Yeah. But uh, so I don't know if that means that they are taking a cut or what. Or just their price of having to have it published and sure. stuff like that. Yes. You know? Now, okay, some some things that I immediately thought about uh, after I discovered everything I, I just told you about. Uh, what if there's no treasure? Mm-hmm. What if there is no location? What if there is no solution? It's just a madman. It's just mad person. Not even a mad person. What? Why don't, how about I sell some treasure maps? Uh huh. Oh. And I make some money selling my treasure maps, and nobody ever finds it. And then it. Oh boy! Like if you, I'll uh, here. I can actually dive into some because this is they. This is not the first thing of its kind. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the earliest uh, of these modern treasure hunts um, was called. Uh, ba ba ba. Whatever. It was from like the eighties. Treasure in search of the golden horse. Okay. In search of the golden horse and the bacon cipher. Oh, okay. Ugh. That's an unexpected addendum. Uh, I, I, I agree. <laughs> it was released in 1984. Okay. So it's as old as us. Mm-hmm. Um, the hunt contained so a little younger than me, and a little older than me. Yeah. I'm but of a young babe. Yeah. The hunt contained clues to the location of a buried sculpture horse made out of gold. Uh, within the belly of this gold horse was the key to a safety deposit box for a prize of five hundred thousand oh, dollars. No. In cash. Although the puzzle had a deadline, it was not solved in time. So what I'm saying is create an unsolvable puzzle, mm-hmm. charge people to look at your treasure map, right? have no solution, sit back and laugh as 30 years go by and people are still talking about it and it becomes a legend. Sickies. Sickies. It's I'm not I'm not I'm not saying that anybody has actually done this. I'm I saying know. that this is some a way somebody might abuse a system like this. I think it sounds pretty good, don't you? Yeah. But I'll tell you what, Joe Bartley appears to be very much on the up and up. I read through all of the rules and everything. There's an extensive list of rules. Um, one of them is five year deadline. Mm, okay. If nobody figures out the location in five years time, Joe Bartley takes all the money that was raised from selling the treasure maps, donates it to charity. That's great. That's wonderful. Mm-hmm. That is something, that that is an action taken that can be observed, measured. Yeah. Uh, uh, and so you don't have to worry mm-hmm. then that this is all for nothing. I right. certainly love the sound of that. Yeah. Um, now, like I said, <laughs> nobody has figured this thing out yet. Um, and on the website mysterioushwritings.com, which is effectively like a gigantic hub site for all of these different kinds of modern day treasure hunts. Um, they, they, they'll like, they'll promote all the different treasure hunts. They have their own forums for them. Yeah. They will interview the people behind the treasure hunts. It's That's very cool. Yeah, it's very extensive. It's, and honestly, I'm almost shocked that it took until 2021 to, for me to even find out that this exists. Mm-hmm. This seems like it's so up my alley. Right. Um, There's like a whole subculture here that yeah, just haven't been aware of. It does seem, certainly not exclusively, but it does seem like it's uh, primarily popular around the UK. Okay. Um, um, so maybe it's just the kind of thing that like, hey, maybe they're ahead of us on the trend. Maybe the trend maybe. will come over here. I don't know. But so um, in their interview with Joe Bartley, um, they were asking what gave you the idea for this? Why, why your interest in this? And so, um, uh, Joe Bartley shared that part of this, the golden, um, oyster hunt is based on a 28 year old mystery known as the golden owl hunt. Um, and the oyster itself is because in their town, um, which I believe, uh, part of it is, um, like the, some of the locations are, are around this person's town. Mm-hmm. It is a it's a fishing town, and so the oyster is actually tied to the sort of trade or the history of that location, which I think is really charming. But they also say I'm fascinated by one of the first ever treasure hunts that took place in England in 1904. Some of the medallions for that are still missing. Now I don't know what that treasure hunt is. I tried to look into it, but I all I had to go on was that phrasing. Right. But. I, I certainly love the lineage and sort of history of, of wanting to do that. You know, some upon the great medallion hunt. 
from uh, 1904. That sounds awesome. I know. Doesn't it? Yes. So um, I looked up some other ones that are going on right now. Because, again, the the, actu- the literal the literal uh, treasure hunt for the golden oyster is ongoing. Mm-hmm. And so to that end, hey, everybody, go, go check it out. Yeah. Uh, see if you can get into it. You can go to goldenoyster.co.uk. Uh, like I said, I got the booklet. Maybe we'll take a look at it whenever it comes in. Did, were there any um, like samples of the pages in it? Like, what kind of stuff are we working with? Yes, they actually had posted um, golden goldenoyster.co.uk. So they had posted on their website. Um, you've got the twenty-two page booklet that you have to buy. Mm-hmm. They also had created what they referred to as an additional clue. And looking at the clue itself. Uh, well, good luck. Okay. Okay. So what I'm looking at is almost like a collage sort of thing, or it looks like a crappy um, book cover of two cats maybe behind some pieces of cardboard, a painter's paint palette, a needle with some thread, a colorful spider web with like a person in front of it, and a notebook that says Lorem Ipsum um, a bunch of times in different directions and in different colors. And around the border of this picture, it says, a goal properly set is halfway reached. Then there's some space, and it says, who is the drift maker? Who is the drift maker? So, obviously, this must mean something. Mm-hmm. Um, what it means? I don't know. Anybody's guess. Exactly. For, for that exact reason, I, I wasn't even planning to cover it. Uh-huh. Um, but, like, looking at it, I can tell you this. For for one thing, all the lorem ipsum that mm-hmm. is uh, written on this thing, when you use Photoshop, yeah. if you start to add text, it will fill in placeholder text of lorem ipsum, just Latin. Mm-hmm. So it struck me, like, this didn't hit me as a clue. This hit me as some sort of a, a work of a work in progress or something like that. Right. But no, this is an example of the kind of clues that are... At play in the Golden Oyster. Interesting. So they all, they all again, each page of this thing corresponds to some sort of a location mm-hmm. um, in, in near this person's town. So real quick, to be clear, are there multiple treasures to be found then? No. It okay. seems to me that if you, you know, page one will, bad example, because this is, again, this is my theory of what they're talking about. Page one, mm-hmm. you'll look at the visual clue and you might go, oh, it's the gas station down the street. Page two, starting at the gas station, and it may, it might, maybe there's a hint about moving north or something. Oh, okay. So I think each page makes you jump from location to location to location. Um, and so the ultimate location at the end of page 22, that is the solution. I gotcha. But you need to be able to show your full right. work. Right. Um, which was never my skill set. No, me neither. But say this doesn't really account for people's learning differences. It's true. Yeah. Sometimes, I, I, you know, if the answer is the same in the end, who the hell cares how you got there? I know. But they, they, they got to check. I know. There's money at stake in a I golden understand. oyster. So I looked up some of the other uh, treasure hunts that are ongoing right now. There is one card called Gargafia. Okay. It was published Beautiful in... Beautiful name. Published in 2017 by Robert T. Jones. You can get a Kindle version of his tre- treasure map for five bucks. Um, it is uh, rated as fully armchair, can claim from home. I so did they're... not know that this was, not, not that I knew a lot about this anyway, but I'm pleasantly surprised to hear that armchair is like a classification given to yes. treasure hunts. That's uh, really cool. Kind of fascinating. One yeah. for accessibility yeah, purposes, exactly. two for location. Yeah, so purposes. honestly, for even uh, financial purposes. And financial purposes. Yeah. Very good. Um, <laughs> well, no, it's true. No, I know, but it's very good. Very good. Oh, I, you made me think of something that I hadn't thought about. Uh, so the prize for the first uh, solve, there, I guess there are four stages to get through. I, I don't know. Um, prize for the first, prize for first to solve first stage okay. of the four stages, $1,000. Not, not bad. I'll I'll try this. Yeah. Tra- I'll try a five dollar treasure hunt to get a thousand bucks. Totally. Prize for solving all four stages, a hoard of over one thousand items. What? I'll take <laughs> the I'll take the one stage, please. I do not want a hoard of. What if the hoard of one thousand items is, is one thousand one hundred dollar bills? 
then then great. I got to get a look at this horde. I'm not yeah. I'm not committing. I'm not signing anything until I've gotten my eyes on that. So then maybe Gargafi is not for you, but you might be interested in. So. I don't like too much stuff. You might then be interested, Kristen, in the custard quest. <laughs> 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 oh my god what is uh, that various hunts are released on their website the custard starting quest. in that sounds like a crappy um <laughs> candy crush knockoff custard <laughs> quest <laughs> custard <laughs> quest <laughs> <laughs> and candy crush is free you know what I mean? Like, why do you have to settle for the custard well, I quest? Think you, I mean, I think if you want to, like, really get there, I think you do have to pay for things. <laughs> custard quest. You know, there was a period of time when bootlegs made sense, right? Yeah. Like, like, you couldn't get, you know, you couldn't get, I don't know, this movie... But you could, uh, you know, you couldn't get Transformers, but yeah. Transmorphers is available right now for a dollar. Yes. Uh, well, now you subscribe to something, you can just probably watch all the Transformers movies for free. So what point is there for a knockoff, especially right. in apps? Apps are... No, but everybody wants to get in on that sweet business. I'm sure there are a million Custard candy... Quest? <laughs> I think there are Candy Crush knockoffs that are like the same game, but it's like pieces of cake or something. <laughs> or bowls of custard. <laughs> yeah, I started Custard Quest. What an embarrassing fortune! To yeah, amass. no, I, I have a, I have a uh, now startup. The CEO of yeah, <laughs> it's your yeah, no, I, I run, a, I run, a, I run a CQ. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I don't want to talk about it. Uh, thank you. <laughs> custard, quest. custard quest. All right, what the hell is actual custard quest? No, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> says uh, this is where it gets c cumbersome because it's clear that there's like such a custard tight community <laughs> custard some <laughs> they've got they've got i think they've got such a handle on their small community that they know what this means it says b-o-t-g required boots on the ground oh that's what that is mm -hmm. okay so it's not an armchair right it's the opposite of an armchair when mm -hmm. you can't do it from home custard quest is gonna take it's gonna take a lot of effort it takes like work it's gonna be physically demanding <laughs> <laughs> By the way, but I if you can eat all that custard, you get two hundred bucks at the end. The only reason I have BOTG at the ready is because a Housewives podcast that I listen to receives boots on the ground reports about Housewives. You and the Housewives. I know, but it's, I swear. I know, but I'm not like so ahead of you on like military lingo. It's because people submit bees on the G's all the time. <laughs> bees on the G's. Yeah. <laughs> So one of the earliest uh, um, of this modern era of stuff was 1979. It was called Masquerade. Mm -hmm. um, it was the first book in the armchair treasure hunt genre. Wait, are we off of Custard Quest? We don't have to be. You want to go back? <laughs> <laughs> I'll go back right now. What do you want to know? No, I, I mean, did is all that you told me about Custard Quest that it was BOTG? <laughs> yeah. No other information? BOTC, boots on the custard. But no, seriously, you have no other information on Custard Quest. CITB, Custard in the Boots. <laughs> no other information on what Custard Quest is, except for that it's you can't play it from your armchair or your torchlight. Well. Kristen, we may never know <laughs> what Custard Quest is. You really don't know? I genuinely, I don't know. I saw the name and it didn't occur to me to ask any more questions. I just wrote it down and moved on with my oh life. Oh my god! We can find out. I mean, so stupid. How can it possibly Why live up to? <laughs> you were you were curious about why this is called Custard Quest? What you're? Searching how dare you for? besmirch <laughs> is, my journalistic say, integrity? This is, this is this is terrible journalism. This is lazy journalism. Oh, oh my wait god. a minute! Really I'm a little I'm... puzzled. So their logo is three children. <laughs> This looks like Blackwood. <laughs> it's, three, it's three kids. But oh it says it says Wendy, Will, and, and in the custard. middle it says <laughs> In the middle it says custard. So this says to me that the name of one of these children <laughs> is custard. What is this? What is this? Is this a treasure hunt? Oh my god. What is this? I I have I have part of an answer for you. <laughs> This okay. This is on their section of their website. By the way, their website is custardquest.com. They have a section that says "What is Custard Quest?" I think all will become clear by the end of sentence three. Custard Quest is a search 
not only a search to find hidden stones worth real reward money, but a search for the truth. <laughs> Here comes sentence three. As Custard Marx says, <laughs> the truth awaits. That's what Custard Marx says? <laughs> That's, what, That's so, like not much of a quote. Anybody can say that. I can confirm. The boy's name is Custard. <laughs> What is going on? While Custard travels around the United States conducting paranormal investigations to discover the truth behind unexplained phenomenon. So they could have investigated the Blackwood Bug Man. They very well could have. Can you imagine if Custard was on the scene? Custard Marks is in our field? Yeah. He's He's a collie? He's a collie. (laughs) What the hell is going on? Oh. Oh my God, William. Okay. What? Listen. How do you join this like what what See, are the clues this is what i was worried about there's no end to the questions <laughs> there would be if you had looked into this <laughs> at all <laughs> like what <laughs> even a little <laughs> yeah be, be, i can't believe you saw the words custard quest and you just wrote down b-o-t-g and said i don't know what that means and moved on to something else listen you that's Crazy. Hey, you. <laughs> that is crazy. Custard Quest. So let's just do the research now. Please click on something so we find out how you even begin the journey of Custard Quest. Okay. There are four quests on the website. Three of them have already been solved. Okay. The reward for each of them was $350. Okay. Not bad. The sole remaining quest <clears throat> that has not been solved mm-hmm. is Custard Quest 4. <laughs> okay. Okay. <sighs> Case name, Strange Little Leanne, an unseen entity. The date of the report is June 15th, 2013. Um, uh, Are you sure you're reading something about the custard quest? Yeah, this is like the rules for... Oh, okay. Yeah, this is like the setup to the mystery. Okay. Kristen... Well, because he's a paranormal investigator. I didn't know if you like clicked on something that was just like a case file. I don't think I can read this right now. All right, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's too long. We can move on. You've tried to hurt me. You've embarrassed us in front of our audience. It's fine. We can move on. I'll never move on. A live audience of <laughs> custard questions. I'm never going to move on myself. I'm you not and saying... your custard questions. <laughs> How could I not ask them? Oh, my God. I don't even want to tell you about. No, we're done. You're done. You think you're going to keep going after this? No, you're done. I don't even want to tell you about. Um... No, William. The Cleveland Terminal Tower now. You think I give a rat's <laughs> ass about that after you introduce cut- Custard Quest? Absolutely not. No, you're done. Your, your segment of the show is finished. All right. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye-bye. I'm going to go to sleep now. <laughs> no, William, I'm thrilled. Well, that's the search for the golden oyster. Okay. Wait. Are you happy? <laughs> Does Custard Quest have a social... Does Custard Marks have a social media presence? Is there an Instagram linked at the very top of the website or the very bottom? It seems to me. I want to know if this is something that's regularly updated. So you're not done. Um, <laughs> I told you I would never be done. Okay. Uh, Custard Marks has a Facebook page. Okay. I'm I, I'm hitting like. Okay. Is it? <laughs> Don't look okay, Forget it. Forget it. All right. He's not even logged in. Guys, <laughs> this is, um, it's called Guide the Unknown, right? So this is the unknown part. This is the we're, unknown. We're going to go ahead and ask you at home. This is your treasure hunt. The unknown Custard is... Custard wh- marks. <laughs> X marks the spot. Custard marks the Custard spot. Custard marks the spot. So we're going to go ahead and ask you to investigate Custard marks to your own curiosity and comfort level and Custard level on your own time. X marks the squat. Let's guide the unknown. Okay. Now we're going to do my part. <laughs> you just did like the minutes like on the radio. <laughs> All right, everybody, it is 7.30. It's Guide to the Unknown. Hoobity boobity. Oh, I accidentally I tried to look it up on Facebook and I typed it. <laughs> we went to Custard Castle. I should also, I, sh- I probably should have warned everybody at the start of the show, I'm severely tired. <laughs> like almost dizzy. Now, please. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Why? I haven't been sleeping, Kristen. I haven't been sleeping. Because of Zoe or? Because of work. Why? I'm a working man. But why haven't you been sleeping because of work? Stress or Poor what? Poor time management. Oh, you've been working yeah, at I've been night? working, yeah. Oh, man. Why? Because I'm a worker bee. Yeah, I know. But why are you working at night and not during the day? Listen, you, you sure have a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, why aren't you working during the day? I've been working during both. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Please continue. Okay. I'm sorry, Will. How dare you? Is there anything I can do to help? 
do you think I would I want any of your help? <laughs> Just get to it's fine. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so I am going to talk about something called the secret, as I mentioned before. And I became aware of this because I didn't check, but I am ninety nine percent sure that our listener Andrea Boley posted about the book The Secret in the Guides the Unknown Facebook group, which you can search for on Facebook. And I was intrigued. And so it turns out there are three episodes. Excuse me from laughing so much about the custard. This episode's episode a catastrophe. Yeah, this is not great. <laughs> um, so I found out that there are three episodes of Expedition Unknown, who is by Josh Gates, who we've talked about in previous episodes, <clears throat> yes. that deal with this book and treasure hunt, The Secret. Um, they are from episode, excuse me, they're from season seven, episodes four, nine, and 12. And now the Discovery Plus app is a thing, so they're all on there. Um, but I rented them on YouTube, and I looked, and it was last year. I was in quarantine, and I decided to like go down the secret rabbit hole, and it's super interesting. So here is what it is. The Secret is a book that was published by a guy who owned a publishing company whose name was Byron Price, and he published this book in 1982. This book contains 12 very cool, honestly, beautifully done, but very like 80s to 90s, I would even say trippy kind of style. Yeah. Um, there, so there's an illustration and then there will be a set of verses that corresponds to that illustration. And both of those put together are leading you to 12 treasures, one treasure for each of those paintings and one of the verses. I mean, it's tricky. Yeah. Like you could be getting all into one verse and find out that you're in the wrong verse for that. Oh my God. (laughs) It's like intense. So the, um, the treasures are casks. So C A S Q U E S um, that contain keys. And the idea was that if you found this cask and the key, you would send this by mail because this was the eighties into Byron price. And in return, he would send you a precious gem. That's so cool. it was very much like a treasure that you're getting. And that was worth, you know, however much money, but really it was definitely like the thrill of it. Yes. And so this became a, thing so it was a thing at the time because it got covered on the news it was well publicized without the internet even being a thing in the early 80s and people got way into it because there are so many i'll show you um some of the pictures and we'll describe them for people at home and you can obviously look them up yourself too but the pictures are like really intricate and really cool looking so there's a lot to pick and be like well does that mean something could that windmill be signifying blah 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 yeah and go down this whole rabbit hole um and honestly like the paintings and the verses and poems are so obtuse and complicated that it really really draws you in because the idea of it is so neat but also to date this came out like just about 40 years ago only three have ever been found oh wow um so the trouble with this and why it's not impossible that others may not ever be found is that the the paintings and the verses really rely on geography and landscape a lot and like landmarks of a city right and because things change over time the treasure might not be in proximity to those landmarks the way that it would have been when Byron Price himself was going out into parks and digging holes and burying these treasures. Like at the time that he did it, everything lined up perfectly, but over the course of decades and decades, things change. So it's posited that there could be boxes that have been destroyed because there are sometimes people who have figured this out to a general area. Another thing is that they're always in parks. Um, That's like the one kind of gimme I would say is that it's not just anywhere. It's going to be in a park. And so people have been able to say, all right, it's in Johnson park or whatever, but you don't know where in Johnson park. And then if there was major construction done in Johnson park, then people on message boards are keeping up with it and being like, it's likely, unfortunately, that the fourth box has been destroyed because a they did major. A bulldozer came yeah. through, yeah. Or it's now underneath a building yeah. or something that you can't get to. 
Um, so that's a tricky thing. And then also adding sort of a layer to this is that Byron Price passed away in a car accident in 2005. And only he himself, you know, as far as we know, and it, it seemed kind of true, had the answers to where these things are. So unfortunately, the answers to these puzzles really died with him. Like he didn't illustrate them. He worked with an illustrator whose name is is John June Palancar, but even he didn't know exactly where these things yeah. were. Like he would give, like Byron Price would give um, him things that he wanted him to integrate into these paintings, but he didn't say, oh, it's under the, this baseball diamond or whatever. He was like, work in Boston, work in um, like the Sears Tower, yeah. you know, whatever. But the guy didn't know. So, um, so yeah, there's there's no record out there that anybody can even check against and be like, yep, confirmed, we can't get to this one because it's been built over. So that is almost like, it's a deterrent a little bit, but it also kind of feeds the mystery. Yeah. Because now it's really like, it's only up to you and your smarts to figure this out. There's, there's no one's going to reveal it for you eventually. Like... It's really just up to you, and it's very, very cool. So I actually, I, I did accidentally copy down some information from the secret. It turns okay. out, and just to to give an example of some of like the the landscape stuff. So, an art, a piece of artwork that looks like a, a stone gateway. So you imagine, you know, any stone work, you're going to see the the like if you imagine like a brick wall mm -hmm. there are the bricks and then there's all the mortar that fills in the spaces between the bricks so for the stone work it's all misshapen stones well if you look closely enough some of the stones kind of look like the state of ohio uh-huh which gives you the state location for one of the stones mm -hmm. and then the the uh tower of cleveland the outline of the tower of cleveland is hidden amongst some trees in the background mm -hmm. but it's just the shape right of the tower. So you have to notice in the trees, like, oh, the space between these trees looks like. Yep. There's the, a lot of playing with stuff like that. How would anybody ever figure this out? Th I mean, three people did. Actually, more than three because it was groups of people, um, okay. the first two. And then it was a single dude who got the last one. But, like, I don't know. People's minds sometimes just work in these ways that m might not make sense to me, but they True. see this stuff. Like, they were even um, – so anyway, so I researched online, but I also rewatched these episodes of uh, Destination Unknown because I had them bought on YouTube already. And so, for example, um, Josh Gates is talking to Byron Price's children, and they're in New York, and he asks them, like, why do you think this one is on the island of – or one of them is on the island of New York? And they were like, well, first of all – like, my father lived here. I'd be really surprised if there wasn't one here. And also, if you look at the hem of the... There's usually, like, a central figure on it. It's sometimes a woman. It's sometimes, like, an elf creature. But there's usually, like, a figure on it. And then there's stuff all around them. Yeah. And so one of his children was like, if you look at the hem of this dress, it kind of looks like the Manhattan skyline. And they put them against each other. And you're like, huh, it kind of does. I would never think of that in a million no. years but people some people see things that way and so those are the people who are gonna be well suited to be going after the treasures in the secret i guess so i mean i guess a treasure hunt of this type is really sort of um like we read mm -hmm. Re ready player one mm -hmm. on our old podcast and like the point of that was to send people out on a quest right to find three things and the point of it is really supposed to be if you get to the end of this journey you have proven yourself Right. There's a little bit of that in there. Yeah. Um, his children said that they, first of all, they think that the book and the puzzles and the locations and everything is kind of a love letter to immigrants and immigration oh. um, into the U.S. Because, first of all, each of the parks, it turns out, have connections to immigrants. So, like, uh, the park in Chicago has something to do with the Irish. The park that is in Cleveland is like the Greek park. And in Boston, it was like a park that has something to do with Italians. So there's always this like immigrant sort of thing going on. And also his parents were Jewish immigrants. Like his father was a Jewish immigrant who came into Ellis Island. Yeah. And so they said that their dad just had kind of a fascination 
with the story of immigrants and immigration. And so it makes sense. And then also the book has a little preamble that's sort of like in a cutesy fantasy way explaining why this has all happened. It's, it's not being like, hi, I'm Byron Price and I thought this would be fun. <laughs> you open the book and it says, hi, I'm Byron? Hi, me Byron. <laughs> me never wrote book before. No. <laughs> Is fun. <laughs> <laughs> this guy seems extremely intelligent so even if but no that it has because the whole thing is very fantasy themed actually in the show they said that the reason that he even decided to do this was that it was in the 80s obviously and there was a, a big fantasy boom going on like people were playing D D all the time and actually uh dungeons and dragons players were like a big part of the audience of people who oh. were buying the book and searching this searching for the treasures and stuff but yeah, like lots of fantasy stuff was just popular in the culture. And he was like, huh, how can I integrate that into a book, but also bring it into the real world? Like just like a cool creative yeah. guy. And so the preamble to all of the illustrations and the verses is a little story about how fairies came from far away and they decided to put these treasures all in different places and like go find them hmm. so even the idea of fairies coming in from far away somewhere else and coming here and le bringing beautiful things to the country yeah. like you could see a parallel to an immigrant story um and also kind of similar to you talking about ready player one and saying that that was sort of like showing that you were worthy not worthiness exactly but his children said that it wasn't so much about the treasure, although it obviously is, but it seems like their dad, I mean, honestly, this is all, it's very cool, but it's also very a wholesome story that her, their dad wanted to get people out, like enjoying parks huh. and like different landmarks yeah. and exploring their cities and like noticing things in a different way. And so a little bit of a destination, not the journey kind of thing, but also the journey is extremely cool. The journey is, uh, the, <laughs> the destination is compelling, but the journey itself is what he was really interested in. Yeah. That, that's, that's very interesting. Yeah. And so if the you The Pokemon were... Go yes, of his time. Of the 80s. Yes. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, so the way that these things looked, if you were to find them, the cask was a plaster box that had different designs on it, um, like 3D kind of not carved, like molded into them or something. And the keys were all these cool molded keys as well. These would both be white. And then they were inside a clear plexiglass box so that they'd be protected when people are digging and stuff like that. Yeah. You wouldn't accidentally just like <clears throat> smash the cask and the key. They don't look like the strongest material ever. And people have found pieces of boxes before. So the plexiglass box is probably a good idea. Yeah. Um, so now let's talk about the puzzles that have been found. And I'll tell you a little bit about what the paintings and the verses are like through the people who found them because then you can get a little bit of an idea of like oh that's what that yeah. means okay rather than just reading like a gobbledygook kind of verse um so <clears throat> the first people who found a box were these three teenagers in chicago who were like major D, &D players they're in uh, or at least two of them are in expedition unknown i think i called it destination unknown before um and they said that they realized that the each image in the book is a reference to the general area and the city. And then the verses or poems are more particular maps within that city to find the treasure. So a picture can tell you that, okay, this is talking about Chicago. Right. And then the verses will be like, okay, make a left here, make a but, but, but. Very cool. So let me tell you what, <clears throat> excuse me. Let me open this up. We're doing a lot of um, internet website work today. I know we are. Okay, so, Will, this is what the image looks like that brought them to Chicago. If you could describe it to oh the people God. at home. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's like it certainly is like a trippy, almost D&D-looking thing. Mm -hmm. It looks to me like an elderly elf, and on top of their head is a castle. A multi-spired castle. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this brought people where? Chicago. It's probably Chicago. <laughs> Do you think there's anybody that would look at this and go, ah, Chicago. Chicago. Maybe. People's minds sometimes work in really crazy, interesting ways. Yeah, it really, th this is this is very bizarre. It's it's an elf with like, yeah, some sort of a shroud they're wearing on their head and on 
coming out of the shroud or on top of their head. It's a And castle. it's not just that. It's super, super busy. And so lots of different aspects of the pictures will apply to what it is. So, for example, the elf, let me see, has something hanging from i mean it's really intricate there's this castle but then there are like pulleys there's a fairy pouring something fairy dust right i will say on the left of the image it looks to me like something in the negative space is supposed to be meaningful so when you were talking about um like the shape of something before and you were saying that something was so they said that this is actually the shape of illinois oh that's interesting yes yeah it it feels to me something about this feels like a contrived shape. Right, because there's sort of a pulley hanging off of a building that connects to something else. And also half of that shape of negative space is made out of that elves kind of head. Um, is it weird to have a clue where like the, the result of it is that you go, see, if you look right here, it kind of looks like Illinois. Shouldn't it like really look like Illinois? I don't know. Probably. But then maybe it's too obvious. I don't know. Uh, I've also now pulled up... Um, the state of illinois and it looks nothing like illinois okay very good uh backwards a a mirror image of illinois Mm -hmm. still only kind of yeah i I think i think it's pretty good that's interesting it's interesting okay okay so this is what they saw and they were able to narrow things down and be like okay they're talking about chicago and the way that they did that um are some observations so they realized that there are fence posts in the picture that match a fence post, um, which was right near where the cask was found in Chicago. Um, the greenish blue fairy in the picture pouring some liquid from a bowl is based on a fountain representing the Great Lakes. The hat the fellow is wearing is similar to the hat worn by Miles Standish in the Longfellow Memorial what? at Longfellow Park. Okay. Um, and also, one uh, one of the things that's hanging off of him looks like a bull upside down. And so that is representative of the Chicago Bulls. There is an image of somebody shooting an arrow on a horse, and that's apparently hearkening to a picture of a horse that's in this park in Chicago. And so they were able to narrow it down to Chicago from that. Okay. Then, so they get to the city, and they figure out places to go from there this way. So I'm going to read you some of the verses, and then what these guys figured out like i would never in a million years so here's a line from the verse where m and b are set in stone set in stone excuse me so the people who found the cask actually thought that m and b meant man and beast and was a reference to the nearby sculpture that is referenced in the picture that i just talk about a guy with a bow and arrow on top of a horse it actually still works but it People think that that wasn't actually what was meant by the um, by Byron Price, because those sculptures are in bronze, not in stone, and M and B is inscribed in stone on the Chicago Symphony Center, uh, referencing Mozart and Beethoven. Oh, okay. So kind of just lucky that they thought it was the same thing. Yeah. And to Congress, R is known. Congress Parkway is the next major street. And so you were supposed to go in that direction. L sits with L sits and left beyond his shoulder is the fair folks treasure holder. L sits in this case is a reference to a seated Abraham Lincoln stru- uh, what's it called sculpture. And then if you look over his shoulder, you'll see like the next thing to go to. Oh. So it is this really intricate. You have to know and be looking at your surroundings so 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 closely like nobody's business absolutely so these people are super observant and you definitely end up getting this familiarity with the area that you're in and if that's what byron price was into i would say mission accomplished because you really have to and i would imagine it makes you curious about the area too if you're like oh beethoven and mozart there like what's the deal with that you might look that up and have more and more of an appreciation for oh, the stuff I, around you. I, I absolutely love the the concept of this. One one of my favorite things to to try to do, and I'm I'm frequently not successful, is be bored mm-hmm. and just look at your environment. Mm-hmm. You know, um, there are so many things that we uh, overlook 
or there's just so much focus on like where you have to go or what you have to do. Yeah. Um, I love this as a, a sort of like hobbyist activity of getting you out and making you interact with the specificity yes. of things in your environment. It's, right. it's interesting. Extreme specificity. It's totally true. So then I'm not going to go into it as deeply, but just give you a glance over of the people who found it in Chicago. They were two lawyers who found out about this and were like buddies and then got into like bonding together and really working on the secret. And this was now when the Internet was around. So they could research that way yeah. and they were able to find it in this park in Cleveland. And um, so in the image, there was again. The sh so the shape of the state is pretty much always hidden in the image. This is the one that you were just talking about um, in Ohio. Um, let's see. There's some visual references to the Greek cultural garden, which is where the cask was found. Um, and then the lines in the verse really kind of like pin down where you would go. So let me see. Just a second. So there's, um, there's a picture of a bellflower within the painting. And then there's a place called Bellflower Road nearby. Kind of stuff like that. You have and to know what a bellflower is then. Well, that's the thing. You have to know really intense stuff. So another example of a flower, I don't even remember the name, is the guy in Boston who found it was like, okay, by this... And this only happened in 2019 that the guy found it in Boston. Oh, wow. And it was being filmed by Expedition Unknown. Oh. It was crazy. So, you know, I'll just move ahead to that. The, that's cool. It's basically yeah. the same kind of thing with the one in um, Cleveland. Like, the same sorts of clues. I guess you get the idea of that now. So let me tell you about the guy in Boston that's on tape. The man from Boston. So, the man from Boston. So... By this time, the episodes of Expedition Unknown where they talk about The Secret have aired and people are loving it. They're emailing the show and getting in touch with Josh Gates, however, like crazy. There was originally just supposed to be that first episode. They only did the second one because they got so much mail about it. They were like, And Josh Gates said it got him excited about it. Like, people are all into this. It feels like it's waking back up, even yeah. though it was still going. But, you know, there was definitely a renewed fervor around it after the episode aired. So he was getting all these emails and he was off filming another episode of the show completely unrelated when I guess whoever forwarded him an email from this guy saying, I really think I have like a clue as to where another one of the casks is and attached to the email was a picture of a piece of a cask. So another thing I didn't mention is that people over time has, have tried to fake this. And, yeah. like, make their own casks and, like, send stuff in. Of and course. And there are certain markers on the casks that um, his that Byron Price's family know about. Because they're still honoring this and will give out gems and stuff. So they have to know. They still have to, access to the gems? Yes. Wow. They have to know how to verify it. So they can be like, no. But the picture that the guy had attached, Josh Gates is one of the only people in the world who has seen these things in person yeah. because of the show. And he was like, that's real. Like, this guy's got something. So he left whatever episode he was filming oh. to fly to Boston and meet this guy there. So the dude had figured out that it was in Boston. Use all these same, like, oh, on that tower, like, something is carved. That makes sense for that. It references green lights. Everybody thinks that the green lights have something to do with Fenway Park. But I think that they have something to do with this green bridge that gets lit, lit up at night for safety and like figured out all this stuff to come to the conclusion that there was a cask um, in Fenway Park or nearby Land Joan Park, it was called. And they were ripping this thing apart at the moment. They were doing all this construction in yeah. this park. So they were like, it's the perfect time because they're already ripping things up. Like we need to look at this right now. There's already this ground is disrupted. Let's like carefully kind of dig through here and see what we can find. So they do this, you know, for the show. And this dude named Jason has his three children, either two children or three children with him because it's like such a fun, big deal thing. And he and Josh Gates are digging in this like, gigantic dirt like pile yeah. slash hole in the ground looking for this stuff and first one of the kids finds a piece of the plexiglass so they're like 
okay, like, I think there's something here. Holy crap. And it's like very palpable. They're all excited. And then someone finds a piece of the cask and they're like, oh my God. And then I was happy it happened this way. The dude, Jason, is like, I got something. I found something. And it's the key. So this had broken apart over the years, but luckily the key was still intact. And they're all like, ah, ah. They're like freaking out. So Josh Gates gets him in touch with the family of Byron Price because he had been interviewing her for, him, for the, them for the show and stuff. And they go to New York to meet them. And his wife and his children present him with the gemstone. That's that amazing. It's so cool. And they had the two other groups of people who had previously found treasures there. Oh, wow. And they're like, you're part of like a rare club now that like nobody is part of. That is awesome. They had the artist there. They had the original painting of the Boston thing there, not the print from the book. And the artist could be like, okay, so here's the deal with it. If you look here, these shapes on the bottom spell Boston super abstractly but he's like it's a backwards b this is an s that curve is you know i mean the curve is an s whatever and they're like oh my god get out of here and um the figure on the card was meant to be a witch to suggest something about salem because it's also massachusetts okay and then the shape of her hair and by the way the woman who's in boston i feel like looks just like bryce dallas howard give it a kook um she has like this hair that's kind of like blowing out almost triangularly and the guy was like that's supposed to be reminiscent of a baseball diamond and then if you look at the shape of the cuff of her sleeve that's supposed to be home plate because it was under what was supposed to be home plate yeah just so cool that's so crazy it's insane and so there's still nine treasures out there like i said potentially not in shape for you to be able to get them but the coolest coolest thing but they're real they exist and no one's found them yet right that Mm -hmm. that that is wonderful that's amazing it's the neatest thing so i'll have links in the show notes to the like wiki basically yeah. of this it's not even a wiki it's it's older and actually i don't think it's been updated in a while because it said there's a rumor that somebody in boston oh, found that's fun. whatever yeah uh, but reality it's got con- ahead of the website yeah, yeah it's obviously confirmed so check the show notes if you're interested in seeing like the exhaustive cataloging of these things the there are like records of like this one seems like it's out of commission folks sorry right and whatever it's the neatest thing i'll tell you what it's very special. Mm-hmm. It's very sweet. Yeah. It's very prestigious. But it's no custard quest. William. Sorry, I was taking a sip there. Nothing is. Nothing is. That's the problem. That's the thing. That's <laughs> nothing. That's good. a treasure hunt of itself. Trying to be as good as custard quest. Yeah, good luck. Yeah. Good friggin' luck. Nice try, buddies. Yeah. So that is it. Those are treasure hunts. That's custard. That's all we got. That's we all. hope you enjoyed the show. Um, if you want more Guides to the Unknown, please go to patreon.com slash pod, where for $4 or more per month, you get bonus episodes every month. There are 24 of them to date. And that's just like the standard comes out every month bonus episodes. We also just do extra things over there, here and there. There are a bunch of video game playthroughs. There are many bonus episodes where we didn't have enough time in a show to cover everything. So we just kind of put out a little mini there. There's a Discord with other God's Known listeners that's popping every single day. That's so cool and so nice. And also you help support the show and keep it going and give us a little thank you for putting this stuff out for free every week. So thank you so, so much for doing it. Thank you to our patrons, and I hope you enjoy what we have over there. And especially right now, we have a brand new episode out where mm-hmm. Kristen and I compete to each other, uh, compete, against, compete against each other in a series of horror trivia games. Somebody has won, somebody has lost. That's right. The winner has already decided what the final episode of this month will be. And the loser is going to hate having to research it. Mm-hmm. So go listen to that episode right now and you can get the jump on what's going to happen at the end of August 2021. Yeah, totally. And actually, you get the jump on everything because we do a monthly planning session with our patrons. That's where we got the idea for this show. On the first Saturday Saturday of every month, we plan out the shows for the month. We fill in our spreadsheet. And a lot of times people in the chat who we're talking to live give us really cool ideas. That's true. Mm-hmm. And That's uh, all on 
patreon.com slash gttu pod and looking slightly further ahead to september 2021 again kristen and i will be at the nj horror con on saturday september 4th yes so come by and say hello you can uh you can come greet us in person and (laughs) then greet us you can greet us (laughs) welcome (laughs) <laughs> that's what they say to us yeah <laughs> anyway that is uh saturday september 4th the nj horror con uh maybe we'll see you there everybody. yeah it should be really cool why not uh so that'll do for this week's episode mm-hmm. if you'd like to reach out to us with any comments or questions find us online that's right i'm at chillin Kristen. i am at the myth traveler so we will see you next week for more sort of reality bending stories yeah right these things sort of like take like reality and actually heighten and like it. Bend and, it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but until that time comes, we must travel. Back to the netherworld, go we. <laughs> I don't know who the hell you think you are. I'm feeling cocky. Yeah, you You're are. You're all tired and I'm on top. I, 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 something's wrong. <laughs> so uh, I looked up the, the, the Custard uh, Quest uh, Facebook page. Okay. Has 100 likes okay. and no posts since 2014. Okay. Rest in custard. All right. Rest in custard. Custard in peace. Give me a piece of custard. Pie. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> Any, anything more to say about that? No. Okay. I think I've exhausted all of my custard wordplay. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know you could do more. Custard mustard. Um, uh, <laughs> custard mustard. Um, <sighs> the, the latest, the last post from Custard Quest was... Glad you found me, Susan. Keep searching. The Custard Quest 4 stone is out there still. At least, I assume it is. Your pal, Custard. No indication who Susan is. Do you think Custard... Is it just a guy who really loves Custard, so he got the nickname Custard? I have no idea. Huh. Interesting. I have no idea. Andrea, was it you who posted about the secret in the Facebook group? You may not even remember. I sometimes have a good memory for these like little dumb things and I, you know, can barely remember my own name. So it's okay if you don't know. Oh yeah, I've never seen the Curse of Oak Island, but I have heard of that. Is there any chance we can Join the Custard? We can figure out the custard quest? Maybe. What what does it say about it? I know nothing. And no information on how to join the custard quest. Well, I think you just you don't you don't have to do anything to join it. Well, no, but I mean, like, how do how we're do you all find part it? of the custard quest, right? How do you participate in searching for the custard? You read this very, very, very long thing. Okay. And then it tells you presumably something to do. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, like, yeah, Andrea, it was you, and then I. I could see, you know, you can see when you purchase things on YouTube. It was May 2020 that I watched all those episodes. So that tracks. It was about a year ago that you posted it. It's all, it all adds up. <laughs> all right, everybody. All right. Well, you must have good night, night. I think you I don't have really to work don't. anymore, do you? What? Do you have to work more tonight? Not no. tonight. Not tonight. Okay. No. no, 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 no. It's just really two, two late nights, but I'm just an old man. Two late nights of, like, crappy sleep is... Like, not enough sleep. That will make you very tired. I'm just an old... That's not even old man shit. That's just, like, humans. You I'm need an sleep. old chunk of coal. You need sleep, man. Um, <laughs> thanks, bro. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know why You're I said right, man. Dude. You need sleep, man. <laughs> Maybe I need sleep. I was listening to um, I was listening to Michael Mike Myers talk mm-hmm. about Saturday Night Live, and he was talking about how exhausted he was and how he didn't enjoy it at all. Mm. He just, like, was working, just had to, like, working, and, power. like... He would crush on stage and then go like cry. Bill Hader was like that too. Is that right? Mm-hmm. So he he told a story about how he was backstage crying after like a nine minute. You know the 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 Wayne's World sketch where Tom Hanks is like a roadie going sibilance sibilance doing yes. like the mic checks and Aerosmith is there. Yes. It's nine minutes and it's all energy and mm-hmm. then he said that after that he was like I I blew it. Yeah. I screwed up. And uh, uh, he said that uh, uh, Dennis Miller walked by and goes, oh, what's up, Mike? Just blew the doors off the joint and you can't take it. That's a shame. <laughs> and he walk, walks away. <laughs> he's, a, he, something like, he's like, some people just can't enjoy it. Huh, too bad. <laughs> just moves on with oh his life. God. Some people just can't enjoy it. <laughs> Holy shit. Jeez. Ah, Mikey. 
Dennis Miller is a love interest in the net. Have you ever seen the net? <laughs> all right, you can go to bed. You can go to bed. It's okay. I'm done. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> If he's a love interest, does that mean that, like, the main character, like, hopefully by the end of the movie, they get the guy. They get Dennis Miller. Well. Ah, babe. Ah, <laughs> took you a while, Chachi. Yeah, he's, like, he's <laughs> like, like that. No, he's her therapist. He's a complete asshole. First of all, it's extremely unethical. He was married, and <laughs> he's just, like, an ass. I was like, why is this guy a therapist? But, um. I love that horse's ass. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, he's Sandra Bullock's. Like, he, he was her therapist. They started, like, having an affair. And then they broke up when she found out that he was married. And then he's, like, the only person she can turn to. Because, like, the net has turned her into, like, a bad guy. Like, all her cards and everything say that she has the wrong name. And that she is, like, on the run for whatever. She's, like, the only person I can trust is you, Dennis Miller. So he, like, helps her and gets her a hotel room and stuff. And they start falling back in love. And then he dies. Oh. Spoiler alert. The net gets him. Um, he's also the star of the Tales from the Crypt movie, Bordello of Blood. <laughs> I've never seen that. He's the star. How many Dennis Miller starring vehicles have you seen? I was shocked to see him in this. I mean, they're having like a big juicy kissing scene and stuff. You know what I mean? Ew, I was how like, juicy is it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they have like a nice reunion. And I was like, ew, why am I watching Dennis Miller make out right yeah. now? Like, Maybe we got to do a Dennis Miller double feature. <laughs> watch the net again and watch bordello of blood no watch the net twice <laughs> <laughs> yes ruth marks andrea yep that's what um sandra bullock's fake name is in the movie ah <laughs> well, another net head i oh, see good. <laughs> yeah, i see you andrea uh oh we got but another anyways, net I'm, nut <laughs> I'm glad you, enjoyed. <laughs> you know i posted a uh, a funny little reels of footage of the net today on my second Instagram account, Aggressively Cozy. I saw that. Somebody usually puts a <laughs> fireplace on a shitty <laughs> CRT computer monitor for ambiance. Yep. And I said, Siri could never. It's so like a 10-inch screen. <laughs> Shit. It's garbage. All right, everybody. I saw it happen, and I was just watching. I was like, I'll let it go. And I was like, nah, I have to rewind. This is gold. I saw it happen. I saw it happen. In the movie I was watching. I saw it happen. And I was like, no, I'm off the clock. I don't need to be doing stuff for my little fun Instagram. And then I was like, who am I kidding? Rewind. The people need to know. <laughs> you just did a real run-up for the Ruffles fans. <laughs> who am I kidding? Rewind with you holding your remote control. Fine. Can we just release the same all, shirt? All 200 of my followers need it. Can so. we release the same shirt? Over and over. And it says, who am I kidding? Rewind with you making that goddamn face again. <laughs> I don't know what that one means. Even less than running for the ruffles. I know. I know. It's just that I need to give the people what they want. Every week, we should <laughs> the same thing. The same goddamn oh, face. God. All right, everyone. All right. I'm going to stop now. There we go. I'm glad now. you enjoyed, Liz. All right. It's been <laughs> wonderful doing this show. Mm -hmm. Hope you had a good time, everybody. I'm sure that we will see you somewhere soon. Um, uh, spread the good word. Yeah. Uh, we already have one person saying I'd buy that shirt. <laughs> yeah, but you have to go to bed. We that's not, it. Rewind. We are not making a that's it. Rewind shirt tonight. All right. That's it. I'm sorry, it. Hayden. Thank you very much. But William clearly needs to. Sleep. All right. That's it. Rewind. <laughs> I don't even know. Can you just make the face for me real quick? All right. Let's rewind <laughs> like that. Fine. What what emotion would you call that? <laughs> Exasperated. But it's... Oh, Resigned. Resigned because that's what sometimes we run for the ruffle. Oh look, we have we have we some. Still have some. It's not the same. William hasn't eaten the. I'm sorry, cat. The lays. So pretend they're ruffles. Yeah, but so yeah, I was. William like, still hasn't eaten the ketchup potato chips. Right. I ate eat them. I don't like ketchup though. What are they? Lays. Yeah. That's, a, that's like a dirty word in this house now. What? Oh yeah, because we love ruffles. Yeah. In this house, we stand ruffles. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's resigned because I was like, you were making fun of me or something. And I was like, oh, this sends me running for the ruffles. May as well. Fine, whatever. And so same deal. I was like watching the net in bed, lying down with just like my head propped up. It's like my back's been screwed up or whatever. So I like need to like <laughs> decompress. So I'm like this. And I was like watching it and I was like, oh, that's pretty good. That pretty, pretty good. 
it's just <laughs> I was like, probably be pretty good for aggressively cozy. But, you know, I'm off the, let me just watch TV. And then I was like, fine, rewind. I gotta do what I gotta do. You leaning half out of frame. It's like there's shit. Look at our live stream right now. If you tuned into something and somebody was lying halfway out of the frame. All right. Uh, but I don't I'll even do think. do it. They'll I, love it. I don't think it's just resigned. <laughs> it's like theatrically put upon. Yeah, it's put upon. It's put upon. Yeah, it's not just resigned. It's put upon. Like, it's ugh. put upon. Uh, the energy I of that. I must. It's, it's the most irritating thing on the planet. <laughs> if somebody did that for real, you wouldn't laugh. I know. You'd be annoyed by them. Yeah. Seeing you make that face and talk like that <laughs> makes me laugh so much. Thank it's you. so annoying. <laughs> Thank um, you. When you picked Ugh. up the chips, Bobby went, LOL, more ruffles. And then Kick Out went, those are lays. <laughs> they knew. The people knew. <laughs> the people out there knew an impostore. <laughs> all right. Because Kat sent us all these awesome Canadian chips. That's right. See? A little Canadian thing. It's just funny to call it out. Those, those are no, not those, ruffles. Those are lays. All right, everybody. Have a great rest of your <laughs> evening. Yep. Everybody have a great night. Thank you. Yep. We'll see you soon, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Jesus Christ. <laughs>